All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, so Phil asked a question, is it going to be that kind of show today? Uh, probably not, because you should have seen the comment I erased and put that one up there. <laughs> Would have been so a better I, have extra, I have exercised mental restraint uh, in the chat already this morning. So for whatever that's worth. Uh, hope everybody's having a good week. Um, I didn't plan to do this show. I didn't even have a topic because according to the internet and all the TikToks and all that stuff, we weren't supposed to be here. The, the oh. hydrogen collider CERN was supposed to have created an earthquake. They went along the major fault through the middle of the U S and it was going to be divided into two countries and most, and I was going to be mourning Mr. Sadie being gone because it was going to wipe out St. Louis and everybody on the East coast. So it was going to be terrible. Here's and what then, you're missing. Uh, the earthquake can happen up to two years before or after the solar eclipse. <laughs> that's what they say did uh did q put that out because they're sure changing the date them them crooked bastards are changing the dates to keep everybody uh on the ranch i'm telling you what <laughs> yeah so much ado about nothing so uh so i hope that you didn't crash your reselling business and everybody just kept working You pay to see my search history. You'd be off a board. I'm here to tell you what. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've, got that thing on, I've got that thing on auto delete and erase and nuclear bomb, all that stuff. Not really. I'm really a most boring vanilla plain person. You know, you just don't know that, you know, <laughs> uh, James Rafty. Good morning. Uh, somebody actually has a question for reselling question on this show. Huh. What? What is ah. the world coming to? Uh, so we'll yeah, see it's that solar eclipse. That's what it is. The solar eclipse made us talk about reselling. Good God almighty. So I have an Amazon shipping question. Is there a better service to ship to Canada other than using pirate ship? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, using pirate ship, uh, if you've got to get their international rate, that's generally the, the cheapest rate you're going to get. So, and I, and it's also the from, from it's also the easiest. It's you know you you barely got to put a few things in there and you're you're good to go. Um, all the forms are done for you. So it's other services do the same thing, but I, they all have about the same rate. You got to realize they're all they're all giving you the commercial plus rate or whatever it is, and they're they're charging a little more to keep the difference. So that's how they make their money in advertising as well, but. Yeah, pirate ship's probably the cheapest. So I've changed my shipping, folks. Um, I got tired of being restricted <laughs> with the, even though they were paying $20, $22 for expedited shipping on Amazon. I got uh, Amazon is, Amazon and eBay look at the shipping days different. So I have one hand day handling on Amazon, and that means if I sell it today, it they count it before 2 o'clock, I've got to ship it tomorrow which is yep. that's not a day because that count this as a day. And so if you have expedited shipping that sells before two o'clock, they count today is that day. And yeah, I can't be tethered down like that. So I turned all that off. So be careful with that. eBay, it, eBay two days means if I sell it today, I don't have to ship it tomorrow. I ship it the next day. They count, they count different. So be aware of that. Uh, the usual suspects are here. Even Tom's here. Hmm. Somebody let Tom out of his cage on a Wednesday. Good morning, Tom. <laughs> the The one thing you can make money on the Amazon shipping is if it's after two o'clock and you ship it same day, you get different options. You know, so. So say you're shipping because I ship here till four o'clock, usually till three thirty. And so if I'll see an expedited, I would normally have just gone ahead and shipped it that day, and they'll let you do ground or priority versus the next day shipping. But I got one that I had to. It was insane the shipping rates. Like, they were like fifty dollars to ship it because I did I didn't ship it until the second day. They counted the first day before two o'clock as one day. 
and I believe I'm not the reason that the final straw was if I didn't ship it that first day, they called it late because so what's the first thing I do in the morning? I'll get up and look and look at what kind of shipping because Amazon will tell you. So I've got some I've shipped them all. It'll tell you this package is in danger of being late. <clears throat> so, you know, that means that you're on the last day. You've got to ship it today. So, it, you know, I, I finished shipping early that day. It's like 1.30. I'm about to go to the post office and I look at the thing and it says, um, you've got a package in danger of being late. I'm like, I shipped all that shit. What, what are you talking about, Amazon? And Amazon had taken that expedited one and thrown it, saying that I had to ship it that day. And that was enough for me to say, you know what, Amazon? I'm through yeah. with you and your expedited shipping. You don't even ship this way. I ordered something prime on Monday. They said it'll be here Saturday. I don't care what kind of math you use and if there's holidays or if there's not. If you order it on Monday before 2, p 2 p.m., Amazon should be required to ship it Monday, you motherfuckers. Do as I say, dude, not as I do. If I'm required to ship, if, if I order it expedited, which Prime is expedited according to Amazon, if I order it on Monday before 2 p.m., it should be in my hands no later than Wednesday. Not Saturday, not any of the rest of that shit. Don't you line bastards with Prime and take and what's we're gonna raise Prime again? Uh, yeah. And so you know what, Amazon, if you watch this show, which I'm, you don't care two shits about the beard picker. Uh, I'm getting even with you, and you don't know it. So everybody here, if you have sure. Prime, I'm about to. How many times do you go to the store and you get a six pack of these Diet Cokes and think, I really don't want to schlep these to the truck? or the car, and all the way in the house, what if Amazon price-matched Walmart, and for Amazon Prime, they just drop them on your front porch via UPS? So now I order all my Diet Cokes for $3.98, uh, $3.98 free shipping Prime from Amazon, and they put them on the front porch. <laughs> so if yeah, you Walmart drink, does that too. If you drink cans and all that kind of stuff, and don't feel like schlepping them around, and uh yeah, and really hire a want, dummy like me to do it. And really want Amazon to get it. Because <laughs> how do they make... Okay, so if that's $3.98 and it weighs... It weighs like seven pounds. How do they make money on that? I don't know. I mean, what is their buy cost on that and their shipping? So, yeah. Um, Amazon and their shipping has, has, uh, has irritated me since I saw you all last. And so, therefore, I have just, I've determined an evil way to get even. <laughs> to answer your... To answer your earlier post, Phil, yes, that kind of show. Um, so I don't know. I'm not even gonna pronounce your name. Do you know anything about Amazon shipping where they pick up for FBM? Uh, I do not. Amazon uh, shipping is not available in my area. Um, it's UPS or USPS, and so I don't know the pros and cons because it's not available. So I haven't looked into it. Um, if there's somebody in the chat, maybe lag ships a lot of stuff. Maybe lag knows, but uh, so technically, I, there's a there's a warehouse here in Huntsville, but because I live ten miles out and I live out in the country, I mean it's not really the country, but it, it to everybody, we don't have DoorDash, we don't have any of that shit out here because I don't know why. Uh, Meridianville doesn't have a, it's not a city, it doesn't have a police force, it doesn't have any of that stuff. It's just a community, and so yeah, we don't get all the fun stuff. Um, I do, uh, go Vols. I almost banned you just for that name alone, <laughs> but I'm feeling, I'm feeling kind. Uh, can you mark out a flat rate box and still send it priority? Depends. Well, yeah. If you still have some of the regional boxes, uh, that's what that's the only way because the regional rates are not accepted anymore. I still have some regionals. I got a ton uh, of regionals. And Govall's the technical. Steve is shaking his head no, but Steve is wrong. You actually can't. I'm can. always wrong. Um, I don't know if they'll do the envelopes or the bags, but any of the boxes you can. Because um, remember, it says if the, in the in the whatever that thing's called, where you look it up, it says if the box is altered, we will charge you oh, yes. the weight and dimensions. And so by blocking out the outside, I, I, so I would cover the. It's not you don't just cover the 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 label. Cover the barcode because remember when it goes to these processing things, they scan all those priority boxes that have barcodes on them, and they're going to kick that out. And so cover the barcode, cover the labels. Uh, it might be more trouble than it's worth, but 
because you're now altering the box, you have to pay weight and weight and distance. So yes, I believe so only, have, only if you alter the box, only. Uh, but I mean, covering you up leave it the same as it is, you will get charged more. So uh, if you got a plain box, yes, you can still ship it priority also. Yeah. Um, Dustin Floyd, uh, I get it every now and then. Um, people say the package is delivered, um, but it's. Uh, that's why I use Amazon shipping and eBay. I don't use eBay shipping. I use Pirate Ship, but eBay, as long as you've got a, uh, a the scan, they're fine. Amazon pays uh, based on an A to Z claim. You know, tell the customer, "Hey, I'm so sorry about that." You should have a template. You know, you know, mention that. You know, contact your local local shipping service. They the scan puts a GPS location on it. If this doesn't work and they can't find it, please. File an A to Z claim on Amazon customer service. They will get you a refund back promptly. And and that way Amazon pays both out because you use Amazon. Yeah. Write yourself up a little, like you said, Perfect. template. I have one for eBay. I don't use Amazon much anymore, but I use it. I just changed the name and changed this, you know, A to Z to open a, a file a claim with eBay or whatever. And yeah, like, as, you know, as, long, as long as you use the terms GPS in there, they kind of get a little nervous if they're trying to pull one yeah. over on you. Like you only get the discount if you spray paint the Pepsi. You don't have to spray paint the inside so they can tell it really is a Pepsi. But as long as you spray paint it, you're good. What if you turn it inside out so that the brown part is on the outside and the Pepsi is on the inside? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, and then use duct tape to uh, <laughs> make sure it gets gets there. Yeah. Uh, go Vols. I hate the Vols, by the way. I hate I hate the Vols worse than I hate Auburn. So there you go. If that's any, if that's any, uh, uh -oh. it's because of that crooked fat bastard Phil Sam, uh, Phil Former, <laughs> not Phil Sam, Phil Former. Phil Former uh, violated NCAA laws, and the NCAA stood right by him because he was a secret witness against Alabama back in the nineties and got his put on probation. You know, for paying players like. His people were probably doing the same thing, but he was mad that he didn't get the big tackle out or big defensive, whatever that guy's name was, out of Memphis. And so one of our boosters paid him to come to Bama, which I don't think he ever played at Bama or he never came, but uh, that was a big giant mess that Alabama got put on probation for. And, you know, you're supposed to be able to, according to NSA laws, they a lot like the, like the regular law. You know, you're supposed to be able to, no secret witnesses, you're supposed to be able to, uh, cross examine and all the stuff, but he's witnesses. But when it's the coach of a rival university in the SEC, you know, they, 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 I mean, it was the, it was the world's worst secret. Uh, uh, what did they do? Are y'all were paying players? Phil Farmer this morning may a, uh, may a semi truck run right into you, uh, this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Not really. I don't care that much, but that's why I don't like. That's why I don't like the ball because of Phil Farmer. Uh, I don't wish him any harm. That was just a joke. How did these girls I think end he's up? Too old, I think he's too old to drive by now. Is he? In, he's probably in a retirement home you somewhere. Get over there. Get over there. Quit play with your cats. Um, how did the Gamecock girls end up doing? Uh, they won it all. Did they really? After they made the team, uh, 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 South Carolina, that was they they went undefeated for the complete season. We're an amazing team. Wow, good. Uh, like I really ever, care. Ever get degated <laughs> on Amazon, Mason? Uh, yes, Phil, it does happen. Amazon does, even if you have sold hundreds of an item, and uh, due to the brand's requirements, HP is a great example. Early on, HP was wide open. HP got mad that with Amazon that, that Amazon was allowing them to sell um, ink cartridges. You know, I picked these ink cartridges up for a dime, but they're expired. You take them out of the box and I'm still call them new. Uh, and that was the thing that really pissed HP off. And so HP got Amazon to lock the brand down completely. So it's extremely hard to sell anything HP no matter how much HP you sold. So that's just a uh, Sony was another one. A lot of the new Sony is is Nintendo gated now. Even though the old Tony is not, um, there are brands out there like that that have come in and got enough clout. 
and follow the rules with Amazon to get get you locked out of an item. So even if you sold it, um, I remember when everybody got Nintendo. Nintendo just shut it down. I did for some reason my account was not affected, but Squishmallow did it too. Even though we had invoices and everything, they eventually shut us down. You just had to resubmit the invoice at that time. That's awesome. Um, I got one. Uh, I got a return the other day that had it was put together was taped with duct tape. <laughs> they used my same box, but it was wrapped in and uh, duct tape. That's um, that's the uh, pro shipping. That's yeah, lag, lag shipping to about boxes is not pro tip. Using using electrical tape as an electrician, that's that's a pro tip. <laughs> there you go. That stuff doesn't stick to boxes though. He, I guess you, uh, he put enough on where well, if you keep going around, around and around and around, it'll stick to itself. Yeah. It'll stick to itself, but it won't stick. To, uh, a lot of tape is like that, folks. Uh, if you're having trouble with your tape, um, tape is designed to stick to tape. You want to know how to avoid some of these shipping issues on eBay when you're buyer? Tell it's, us. Uh, Send them one of them reading. long paragraphs about could you please take care of the ship this in a box? One of them that yeah, I wrote. Right. Yeah, do that. Them. No, just look at their ratings. I mean, it's easy. If they have 10 ratings and they're, they're <laughs> probably a newer seller, if they have 5,000 ratings, you're probably going to be all right. Yeah. Um, so the difference, though, is there is one tape that is designed to stick to cardboard. Anybody know? Anybody know? Yes. Paper tape. Paper tape. Paper tape is designed to stick to cardboard. It does not stick well to cardboard that's already been taped, though. With plastic. It does not. That that is a that's a great point. So if you're gonna if you use paper tape, um, it does not stick to the plastic tape hardly at all. So you have to pull that Sometimes. off. Um, it is. It that is a. If you're re if you're a reuser, box reuser like I tend to be, you got to make sure that plastic tape is off of there, or you got to tape it six times. Like, be lucky you live in Philadelphia. If you lived uh, anywhere out in the country and your duct tape got away, somebody probably shot it. Uh, they even put that stuff in country songs. One of the country songs I was listening to said if he'd, uh, if he'd had a dollar for every one of those ducks, he'd, he'd knock down the Mississippi mud or some shit like that. The, the, man, don't listen to country music in the car by yourself. You sit there and cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't cry. No, the uh, newer stuff isn't. I listen to the newer stuff just because I usually listen to the old stuff, but newer stuff doesn't isn't as like. So I've got a I've got a playlist. Country. I've got a playlist for the stuff I like. Stuff's acceptable when Harlan's in the car. Jody and I have so if you've got the if you got iPhones and you've updated to the latest seven point four or point five, whatever the latest one is you can now do a collaborative playlist. And so there's a playlist that Johnny and I, because we're always, I mean, we listen to a lot of the same music, but she listens to a lot of this new music. That's just vomit, uh, the Taylor Swift and all that garbage. And so we have one that, uh, we can both add to it and take away from the, the car compromise, what we call it. Uh, so that's, that's, that's pretty interesting. Who listens uh, to Taylor Swift, but I do have, uh, I do have one playlist called Country as Hell, and that's usually the one I'm listening to. Oh yeah. It's got you know, it's got it's got Sturgill Simpson on it, it's got uh Tyler Childer, it's got country country. Oh yeah, that's put in. My wife has her own Pandora channel, so that's what goes on in the car when she's in the car. But for me, I just listen to the radio. I don't do it. I just need um, music. But that new stuff is the old stuff is what I prefer. It's just there ain't any stations around here to play that anymore. Uh, Larry, I'm glad to see you're still here with us, and the demise of your city was greatly exaggerated. Because they said they said the eclipse was going to take out St. Louis. Y'all are going to be in the new ocean. So I'm glad to see you're still here. You know, I'm starting to believe in some of these conspiracy theories, like the flat Earth. 70% of the Earth is water, and none of it's carbonated. <laughs> Shit. Uh yeah, uh Larry, wow. Okay. John Conley John Conley's on that one. Every time John Conley comes on the van, Har Harlan uh Harlan, it's just terrible. He hates John Conley. I don't I know why. John, Conley. John Conley's a man. <clears throat> Who is uh, he? John Conley, I I'd seen him for about three seconds at the end of a fair one time. And my wife actually got to meet him at a, he came to a, a men's dinner. He didn't sing, he spoke. Eric, Eric, you're 19 minutes there. late. 
19 minutes late, Eric, because remember on my thing, it tells me when you comment, it says 819. Uh, did, do you have a doctor's excuse or something for being late? It's terrible. Do you believe in Sasquatch? Never heard of it. Who is that? But uh, so, so I talked to Jennifer a lot. Jennifer uh, sourced a lot of the same thing. And we've really been talking this week a lot about shipping, folks. If you're not taking advantage, I shipped 43 items that were three pounds or less on Monday, and not a one of them was over seven dollars. That's freaking amazing. I, I mean, we talk about you know how much the platforms, you know, people quitting the platforms are charging more. Folks, you are, your shipping is so much less. It is offset any, it is offset hardly any fees because these same items, two to three pounds, were usually eight to ten and eleven dollars each. It's rare I see that unless I unless I sell something big. And remember, I swore off big things, but I lied to y'all. I didn't swear off big things. <laughs> of course, you didn't. Because I don't know how much this thing weighs. Uh, my big find from the yard sales, right there. Uh, so that's a a robot lawnmower that I bought for 150 bucks at a yard sale. Oh no way! A uh, guy had never opened it. It's still sealed, never opened. Um, Lowe sells it for 700, so I'm gonna list it for 600 on eBay today. Um, he even gave me the kit that goes with it, the starter kit. So I'll probably sell that separate. I hadn't looked that up yet. He had it for 20. He's like, you know, it was later in the day. He's like, I was gonna ask him if he'd sell them both for 150, and he goes. If, if you're really interested, I'll give you both those for 150. I'm like, man, so I was, I was practicing, my, practicing my best Harlan, just try not to act super interested, just ask him a few questions and then be quiet and let him let him discount his own product. So that was good. Start same looking guy, at other things. That's my little trick. Same guy sold Harlan. Well, he, he wasn't going to get full price because same guy sold Harlan four easy go chargers for lawn, for those kind of lawnmowers for a dollar each. Folks, if you don't look up at yard sales, if you don't look up chargers, DeWalt chargers and stuff like that, you see a lot of, they're worth 20 or $30 each. But, yeah, that's going to be a thing. Uh, Tom still listens to the Elvis Preacher. Tom still thinks the Elvis Preacher guy is Elvis. Who the hell is the Elvis Preacher? If you're not seeing the guy on the internet uh, who's got all Elvis's mannerisms and they're trying to... Th- you know, this guy's like 20 years younger than Elvis, but they're trying to convince everybody it's really Elvis still alive. Okay. Well, he's probably had some work done. Um, there's a... Speaking of Elvis, there's some people... There's a couple of guys that do a lot of cruising. They have a show called Ben and Jerry. And they were all recently on the Icon of the Seas, I believe it was. And... I mean, they're, they have Buku followers and get free trips all the time. And uh, so they're well known. Anyway, they were on this Icon of the Seas, which is the largest cruise ship in the world. And uh, they were filming inside of a restaurant and, and the uh, management came over and shut them down. And uh, they said they were real nice about it. Just said, we'd prefer that you not record in here. Some people have complained. Well... Now it's got a conspiracy thing going where, you know, was there um, a politician with his girlfriend there or boyfriend? Well, go back and look at the video then. Well, they looked at the video and they can't see anybody that really stands out. Well, there's there's a lot of people, though, Tom, that, you know, they're so scared to be in front of the camera. Uh, they, act, they act like that you, everywhere you walk around when you leave your house, you're not recorded 24-7. You know, every doorbell camera, every street camera, every store has video. They act like nobody ever, they act like they're invisible in front of a camera. You know, they're so ugly that the camera doesn't see them or whatever it is. I don't know. That people are, you're recorded 24 7, seven days a week, whether you like it or not. So, what they were saying, that one conspiracy theory is that Elvis is not dead and he was on the cruise ship. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they that had, was the, that was probably the most realistic one. They yeah. had some, um, some sketches that some artists had made of Elvis being like 90 years old. Isn't that about what he is now? Or what he was if he was yeah. still alive? 
and it really was a good painting. Uh, another one was somebody was in the witness protection and, you know, witness That's protection good. and they supposed to be dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, the, sh the shipping though, the reason why I keep bringing it up is it really should alter the way you think. While the shipping is this low, and you know, I don't know how long that UPS and UP and USPS will be battling out for business customers. Take advantage of it. You really it it changes the way you it should change the items that you you source, because the the one thing that was evident until all this happened, until Grand Advantage started bringing all this stuff down, was the three times rule that I'd always use was not a hundred percent anymore. There's a lot of times you find an item. And, you know, the rule was always, you know, I make, if it's a $10 item, you sell it for 30, I make 10, Amazon keeps 10 with the shipping and you pay the $10 back. And so that, that, or eBay, either one, that was the way it worked. But as the platform's fees got higher and the shipping got higher, that $10 became 12, 13. So your portion of it became seven or eight at the most. And now that balance is brought back in. It's much easier to say, hey, the three times rule is, is back easy because the shipping has gone from being, you know, more than a third to less than a third. So it's really. Um, I think it's a good idea to look at your shipping policies like on a platform like eBay, because right now, sometimes media mail is more expensive than ground advantage. It's crazy. But I've sold a few, especially the heavier it gets. Ground advantage tends to be a better deal for for media. And uh, it, you want to get a leg up on your competition if you if you charge shipping, you know, be very careful because you can you can really overprice yourself on. You know, I want to make shipping. I want to break even just a little bit more, maybe ten percent more. I want to cover the cost of the box and supplies, cover the shipping, and maybe a few cents more because there are going to be some that I lose on, some that I gain on. I. I just want to break even, you know, there's people talking about, you know, you know, you should make money on shipping. I'm like, no, I, it's just a part of the deal. I want to be able to deliver value to the customer. I, it's not a win or a lose. It's just a, let's get it to them at, at the most economical rate where it doesn't cost either one of us more than it should and, and move on. Um, you know, what, when you sell to another, when you sell something to another seller and you charge them priority rates, and you're shipping at ground advantage or whatever it's called. Uh, and it takes longer to get there. That really pisses me off. I mean, that's, you know, and, and I will say, hey, why did you charge me so damn much when, you know, you could have shipped at priority and I'd had it two days ago. And so how does this cost also affect your, your thinking on an eBay platform? You know, you should really consider understanding what your shipping costs are free shipping should be available to more items. You know, I used to, to do anything that got out of uh, first class was always going to be some sort of calculated or some sort of, but you know, now so much of that is $6, it's, you know, that easy to calculate, you know, use $7 as your max shipping and setting your prices. And remember free shipping is still preferred by eBay because let's face it. We've all dealt with the eBay customers. You know, they think shipping is free. Most Amazon customers especially think shipping is free that nobody, you know, you're selling on Amazon. So the post office makes a, a magic wand. Nobody gets paid and it just comes through by, by the shipping ferry, I guess. I don't know, but it's Imagine. really it's free shipping because you won't, it's harder to lose now because you're not going to have that. Oh my God, it's going to Alaska moment. If it's two or three pounds, because it's still $6, $7 back to Alaska and Hawaii, Puerto Rico. Because ground advantage covers all those areas now. Um, I got to tell you, um, whatnot has shipping done fairly well. I, I enjoy shipping over there. They give you a picture if you put your if you preload your pictures into the auction. They give you pictures of everything, and if you number them, it makes it really super easy. Are and you then they, a show you them all. Oh yeah, I'm having a whatnot show tonight. Oh my Although, god, nobody. Nobody used my coupon last week. Not a single person. Steve's having an eBay show, a whatnot show tonight, and it, buy, buy cheap stuff. 
It, it well, it's going to be cheap and it's going to be a CBS return pallet, but no OTC because you can't sell that over there. Anyway, but their shipping is so easy over there. It makes it it makes it wonderful to ship things, and uh, you can cap it at eight thirty five up to seventy pounds if you use it. Uh, uh, good good morning, A. Is it too early for that? Have you had your uh, Have you had your uh, Tim Hortons? Uh, Mr. Josh says that eBay has fallen to the number 20 shopping. Okay, so is that number 20 downloads? Because I would expect many and, and, the, and our larger, how many how many downloads and is that app going to get because it is established? You know, whereas more people would, I would think, would download the newer platforms. Uh, he's having his Tim Hortons right now. But there you go. Did you get some Tim bits to go with it? I had ten bits the other day because one of the other uh, delivery drivers had some. She didn't want them, so she gave them to me. Man, those are good. Uh, yeah, I watch too many Canadians on YouTube. So, and one of them that just gets, which he drinks decaf coffee. I'm like, can someone please explain to me why to drink decaf coffee? Because you want to. Thank you, Michigan girl. What the hell, decaf coffee? What's the point? Well, Roberta drinks decaf coffee occasionally, but you know she has a kind of a reason for heart. I have never found a reason to drink decaf myself, but I don't have any heart issues. So. And like if drinking, I did, I'd probably take the risk because I love. It's like drinking ca decaffeinated <laughs> sodas; though they taste like mm -hmm, caffeine. Ugh. What time you do sugar-free or diet caffeine-free? You might as well drink just. Brown water. Yeah, yeah Tom, Tom, it's just like this to people to drink non alcoholic beer. What's, I mean, what's the point? There's a little alcohol in there. If you drink enough of them, you might get wasted. Uh, I, I, well, we had a. My, because I get uh, tired of drinking water, that, uh, Timothy. That's my stepbrother <laughs> was me, My stepbrother was mentally challenged. I didn't grow up with him, but. And he wanted to drink beer, but they knew they couldn't give him real beer. So for him, they gave him that stuff, and he felt fine about it. You know, that sort of thing. And so there is a certain segment of the population that might benefit from that. Like, no, Tim Hortons is not coffee. Tim Hortons is what they call McDonald's in Canada. And so uh, instead have, of instead of the Golden that. Arch, they make it a big H. It's a, it's a complicated uh, copyright thing. And so Tim Hortons is actually the northern branch of McDonald's. I thought Tim Hortons was like a Denny's. It was the it's the golden H. Up there's what they refer to it as. The food they, uh, Canadians are invading with, and they're doing it slowly. But it's Tim Hortons. We're getting a bunch of them around here. You know, and so this is this is so important, and nobody talks about really about ground advantage because it is how do you? I've talked about this before. How do you get an advantage over other sellers? Do you do you spend your time bitching about promoted listings and bitching about? Uh, oh my God, eBay is now, if I sell an item over $10, eBay's charged me an extra 10 cents. You know how many people lost their minds because they changed the service fee from 30 cents to 40 cents? You would have thought the internet was crashing and uh, the great mash wailing and gnashing of teeth because eBay has raised a dime. And nobody has said a word about, you know, how do you offset the dime? How do you take advantage of you understand that your shipping is now so much cheaper that a dime doesn't matter that you have a significant competitive advantage. If you actually do shipping well and do it right. It's amazing. Chastity thought that Tim Hortons was Hardy's. That makes more sense. I should have used Hardy's instead, but Hardy's is now Carl juniors for a lot of people. And that's just a whole mm, we'll go have a One Hardy's two Hardy's, I think locally. Hardy's used to have the best hamburgers and the biscuits of anybody in the industry. Sorry, Scott. I don't no, think I don't I've care. ever been to Hardy's. I, I worked there two years. Oh, did you? My favorite restaurant I ever owned was this old rundown Hardy's. There's no, it's no longer there anymore. They've knocked a building down. That's so they this store was dying, and they're like, "Can you please go see if you can fix this store?" So I, they sent me over to, and I saw I hired some good staff, and I, that's the that's the store where Joni Joni calls me and says something about about her bowberry biscuits weren't exactly right or not her bowberry, but whatever the cinnamon, whatever they were. Right. Like, I needed to go talk to the biscuit bitch. And I'm like, listen here, I'm short handed this morning. I was the biscuit bitch. Shut <laughs> up. 
that's, that's a great story. Uh, <laughs> and the biscuit bitch has got to go, and I hung up on her dumb ass. <laughs> biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> but that store, so Hardy's, that store had been remodeled like four times. It was really old. And so originally these old restaurant restaurants had bathrooms on the outside. And they had been, these doors had been, nobody had used those outside bathrooms. Now there's inside bathrooms. So nobody had been in those. Nobody had keys to them or anything. So now I broke into one of them. Actually, I broke into both of them. And I cleaned out the men's room. And I made that my own personal bathroom because they were all still functioning once you got rid of all the spider webs and all that stuff. <laughs> so I had my own personal office and uh, and bathroom and everything at a restaurant that nobody else used but me because once I broke into it, I changed the door handle on it and got myself. I was the only one with a key. That was amazing. Yeah, it was cinnamon raisin business, uh, RG. That's what she was bitching about. Okay. I will, when you're on my show the next time, I want your tagline to be the biscuit bitch. <laughs> Yeah. We have a Dairy Queen locally that you know, when you're talking about old restaurants, they built it in the 70s and haven't upgraded it since. It, it's really kind of a, it, it looks exactly the same as when I was a kid. And they have these uh, chandeliers that hang, not chandeliers, but you know, like the stained glass, the old ones are still in there. They're worth quite a bit of money. On I-40. And it's dirty. At um, at the old, at old Fort, at the Parker Padgett Road, exit there is a stuckies dairy queen there and i don't think they've ever done anything to it i think it's still got dot 1969 dust in that place yeah ours certainly does it's crazy how how it's not changed since i was a kid and i'm 53 years old you know? god you're Damn right. exact, everything's set up the same i don't think they've mopped the floor since 1973 <laughs> They got some damn good ice cream. It's in a nice area, too. I don't understand why they well, probably, you know, whoever owns it doesn't care, but it's a popular restaurant. People are there all the time. Uh, yes, Eric, I left that job. Uh, I went to take a training manager position at a Taco Bell from down the street and because uh, it was fast track to a district manager job. And I played district manager for Taco Bell for like four and a half, five years. That was, God, that was awful. Uh, but it's it's amazing how many people lose sight of, you know, they see a spring update, they see a fall update, and their first reaction is, oh, my God, this is changing. This is When their first reaction should be, you know, how can I win? You know, how can, how can I take advantage of the new rules that are coming to effect to be an expert on the new rules? You know, whenever eBay started changing their search last year, you know, you see a lot of people that complained about sales, but there's also a lot of people going, what are y'all talking about? Because they were taking advantage of, of the clues that eBay was given. Do I agree with how they went about it? I don't, but also, you got to realize you got to take those feelings out. You don't have a lot of control over it. People spend so much time fighting over things they have no control over when the things that they have solid control over and can get a competitive advantage of, they completely ignore it. They act like it doesn't exist. It is absolutely amazing. And Charnock is positive. The sky is falling. Positivity is greater than the sky is falling. It is. It is a hundred percent correct. Uh, it's how, how how much better do you see your business, and how much easier is it to go to work for yourself and do these things and keep motivated? If you're focused on the fact that man, you are saving a lot of money on on shipping, and you're shipping, and how can you, you know, I shipped forty three items the other day in it was like an hour and twenty two minutes, and I was on the phone the whole time. Jennifer's like, are you sure you're finished shipping? I'm like, I've just wiped through 40 of these and I just got to go get the other three from the building. And I, I know right where they are, which is absolutely amazing. It's It was an hour and it was hour and 14, hour and 18. It was somewhere in there. You know, if you would focus on, you know, efficiencies, you know, the money and uh, from saving shipping and buying better products because now you're available to select more items you know, look at Amazon and go, man, I can make more money if I ship these things myself. You know, they'll, they'll, Amazon is now favoring 
merchant fulfill a little more than they ever used to because they're encouraging smaller sellers to to merchant fulfill because it makes their warehouses easier. Oh my God, Amazon is trying to. Do you focus on Amazon is trying to push out the small seller, or Amazon is trying to encourage the small seller to do their own shipping because the one-offs in the warehouse hurt much more than if they had a hundred of the same item. So I've taken a long break from reselling, you know, part, you know, full time. Well, I'm trying to get back into it. And that's why I'm doing all these whatnot shows, CBS pallet show tonight. Come watch it. But I promise not to spam the chat today. So I'm going to spam the live show. But anyway, <laughs> what I've noticed in the last few weeks is I have more time to focus for eBay, more time to focus on quality merchandise. Like I'm, I got really picky at what I buy. And guess what happened? It all sells real quick when I list it. I, I listed a stuffed monkey for $54 and sold in two days. And I listed a camera for around the same price. It sold in two days. I listed a pair of binoculars. It sold in two days. If you're buying the right stuff, and, and that's what got us in trouble. We were buying the wrong stuff. We were focusing on trying to make the most money, but not necessarily being as picky as we should have been. Now, since I step back, it's so much nicer to be a reseller. But but so many people don't don't take the time to step back. They don't take time. They don't get that overview of their business and how things are. Functioning. We were forced to. So. I've changed three times in the last and ideas in the last six months, and I'm and I'm even evolving a little bit right now because I want most of my stuff to be right here. And I'm like, I am not doing any more big stuff. And I was fighting myself in that guy's driveway. I'm like, man, should I really buy this lawnmower? But I'm, gonna show them I'm sitting here thinking, if if I don't buy the lawnmower for $150, you know, I'm I'm potentially gonna make more money with one item. You know, shipping is just putting a label on it, having UPS who's already coming here. Um, just pick it up. It's it's amazing that the things that and the sell to rate on this lawnmower is amazing. It's, a, it's the right time of year. So it's getting listed today. Uh, Chernock, you're 100% man. Complaining is easier. And no, if you're if you're self employed and you're you're busy complaining to yourself, it's that self. So I, I listened to so, so I listened to a podcast the other day, uh, and he was talking about it. It was. It was Rob Dow. So if, you, know, you guys know I've talked about Rob Dow in the past. I listen to Rob Dow probably three. He does 15 minute po shorter podcasts. So I listen to three or four. I try to listen to three or four a week. And he was talking, one of his, I think it was last Friday, was about negative self talk. And you are your biggest enemy. You know, how do you expect other people to treat you well and take you serious and do all these things? When you talk bad to yourself, you know, Yeti. You're, you're a loser, you're terrible. And and somebody on this panel is the worst person I know about it, but he's been, he's getting better. Yeah. All, all the things you say, Steve, I go, all those things are correctable, but until you don't identify I'm getting better and, and, and really focus on, you can't, you can't be your own worst enemy. And we, you've heard that your whole life. But negative, you've got to end the negative self-talk. And that is a great podcast. Um, you can find him in all the ones. Apple, uh, I, I really recommend Rob Dahl. It's an easy 15-minute listen most days. Um, he's a smart guy. Um, uh, mindset, Mental Mindset Podcast or something it's called. Um, so Josh says, if you're convinced uh, you will succeed or if you're convinced of hell, you're going to be correct. I believe That's what that I used to tell. I used to tell my children a similar thing. You're all. You're right. No matter what you think about yourself, you're right, because you manifest it. You make it true. And I do it all the time. You're. You're not wrong about that. Back to the shipping thing. I went and picked up some coffee pots from um, a restaurant auction, and there was a guy in there, and he bought two of those big ass. Floor mixers, you know what I'm talking about? The commercial ones? Yep. Two of them. And he didn't pay hardly anything for them. Because nobody and, wants to deal with a big item. And he sells them on eBay. And he says, because nobody wants wants to deal with that big. And he says, I take it home. I clean it. My wife and I clean them up. I plug them into an outlet that I've had installed so I can make sure it runs. 
and then I set it over on a pallet and bolt it down and box it up. So there's a YouTuber that Harlan follows. I don't follow him much, but they're called the flea market flippers. And uh -huh. they were selling all these small items and they decided they, their story is they made the decision, you know, we want to sell items, bigger items. Nobody wants to deal with, but we only want to sell 10 or 15 items a month versus hundreds and hundreds. And so everything they sell is big. They sell, you know, they palletize it and send it on. Uh, and so if you, if you want to get some clues about that kind of stuff, that, that, that information is out there. Watch the flea market flippers. Uh, they've got a list for little to no money. They'll tell you everything in the world they buy. It's the big stuff is always at the yard. So there's a reason why that lawnmower not. Okay. So there's a couple of reasons why the lawnmower is still in the driveway. Nobody went in this neighborhood for some reason. It was beside a big neighborhood that was happening. So and Harlan and I just saw a sign and we're like, I was turning around because we had passed one neighborhood um, and we ran into that one and that was sitting in the drive. I mean, you know, people don't want to, that big box there, they don't want to deal with something that's, how many people at yard sales, we talk about a lot, don't have $150 to spend at yard sales. That's, so. that's, that was my, yeah, my thinking is that most people just don't want to spend that kind of money at a yard sale. I, I learned a lot from Kevin, Tennessee Picker. He takes some money with him. He takes enough to make sure that he's got enough money to, by yeah, I started out with across. I started out Friday with five hundred, and when I got done Saturday afternoon, I had ten bucks left. And good Bob thing, T, what not? Bob T is asking a whatnot question, so I'm going to answer that real quick. For me, it can be a clearinghouse if that's what you you're looking for, you know, like a discount auction house, and it can be really good. I did a video game show the other night. I sold one hundred video games. <laughs> Out of my collection, they were all low end. I made two hundred and seventy seven dollars. That's can y'all see that? That was, and we added more stuff on top of that. But that was <laughs> to a finally the point. The stuff's on the floorboard in front of Harlan, and finally we're like, "Damn it, we we can't put anything else in this van. We have to quit because we can't." Put, I have ten dollars left, but you know, there's an ATM. I could have got more money, but there is. I mean, it was to the point we had nowhere left to put stuff. It was a nightmare to try to empty the van. We got, um, we got to Harlan's place, and we're like, "All right, I'm gonna open the door." One of us has got to catch to see if anything falls out of this damn van. It was, it was so freaking full. Yeah, Harlan, Harlan left the five dollar rocker behind. Uh, he did tear up. I saw, I saw the tear in his eye. He had to go find, he had to go find his his wonderful uh, girlfriend to. Uh, to just cry into her arms or he had to leave it behind. It was terrible. <laughs> I'm like, dude, let's go eat lunch. He's like, no, I'm so sad. That's a lie. We ate lunch, but <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to leave stuff behind uh, that, you know, makes money at the auction hurts, hurts. Couldn't, it was a $5 rocking horse could not fit in the van anywhere. My biggest problem back in the day was I didn't never took enough money with me. So when I saw something like that, I had to either leave the yard sales and go find it, and then I miss out on everything else. Uh, baseball says so now I have, it, that's I have one changing. word for you, BP. I have one word for you, baseball. Late. Late. <laughs> um, I, uh, I want to one really briefly get back to that whatnot thing because, yes, you can get a lot of cheap, good items on whatnot. It is a discount auction house for some people. For others... Like storage auction pirate has a huge following over there. He makes a crap ton of money. There's right? a there's a whole stack of Barbies right there. And then I sold like I, I don't have a big following, so yes, my stuff is probably going to go a little cheaper. But the games that I sold the other night were stuff that's been sitting on my shelf in the basement for two years because it's not worth selling on eBay, right? To me, anyway, it wasn't. I didn't go back and look them all up. There's probably a few good ones in there. It took me two hours to sell them, two hours to ship them. I made two, almost three hundred dollars for four hours worth of work. I mean, I'll I'll do that every day of the week. So. Sue, everything was buried. I couldn't even get to anything to tie it to the roof of the van. I told Harlan we were going to take the topper, and then I forgot up late and then didn't put it on top. That's it. I, well, I'm not taking the, the van. The alternator thing's dead again, so we'll probably be in a truck this week. One of our trucks. But uh, yeah. I, I think I would like to meet Mike. Storage occupier. Okay, so there's there's people. So, um, so 
been watching a lot of Watna, uh, interested in sourcing there, uh, interested in helping someone get, get started there. And so we've been watching a lot of whatnot. And uh, there's this crazy chick who sells in the upscale market where she goes. Last night she was selling hinges, old door hinges that had the old paint on them or whatever. And you, you know what the creative idea for somebody in the chat, please tell me what, what, how can you create it? What does that, what does a hinge look like? What can you, what can you, an old hinge? What can it creatively come up to be? Somebody tell me. She was selling bob thread bobbins with thread on them and without thread on them. She was selling uh, the way the power used to come, the little thimble-looking things, the connectors on the white things. She yeah. was selling those. She had put twigs of of like basil and stuff in them. It was getting fourteen and fifteen dollars each for them little bitty things. There you go. Um, I've given you enough time now. The older, the older hinges that are kind of not square, but they're kind of they're angular. People decorate them up, look like bats for Halloween. So she was selling hinges for ten, twelve, fourteen dollars that she buy, that she buys at local at local places. She buys them at the how much of that kind of stuff she finds them in the bins. It's it's here's, amazing. Here's the thing: once you buy more and more and more on whatnot in one show, you're saving money on shipping because they can do that. I do it. And so that encourages your buyers to not just buy one item. So that's the key to whatnot is you got to get your buyers to buy more than one thing. I, I had a guy buy 32 games. Uh, 90 a bucks. Is a good one. So her name is uh, Upcycle by Bree. This, this woman is smart. I'm telling you, she is, she is so smart. So Upcycle by Bree runs a, she has a, she has a YouTube channel. And she shows some things. So she does some videos on YouTube of what she picks up. And she puts some things on her own website, uh, which she drives the traffic to the website by people watching the videos. She also uh, sells on whatnot. Uh, she has a Instagram. And so she's lots of places where she shows. She doesn't hide behind it. She'll tell people, you know, I went shopping at the end of the day. This is everything I got. And she'll be selling it the same day in the, in the evening. You know, oh, but what happens if I tell people I bought this at the bins? People don't care. They don't care. There's live shows where she shop. They're shopping at the bins, and they pick up an item. Do you want me to buy this? And then they auction it off right there. And if nobody buys it, she throws it back in the bins. But that she's got crazy. a she, four or five. So Jennifer, I watched her yesterday. She had sold uh, sixty some items for over a thousand dollars yesterday. And that's and that's she was still like selling when I quit watching her. But um, I'm telling you. If you if you look at whatnot and go oh that's just a discount place and 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 walk away from it, it's you're missing perception. you're missing the point. It takes a little work to build an uh, audience up there. Michigan girl, I'll tell you, I'm not lying. Um, but it is if you start selling a lot of similar items, uh, you know, upcycle, recycle, uh, estate sale, electronics, electronics go for decent money over there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Nashville, the Nashville pickers they sell mostly electronics. Card sellers, video game sellers, and electronic sellers do really well over there. Yeah, just don't discount what you what you don't understand or don't watch. I challenge you, go watch someone. Okay. Go watch Michigan Girl. She sells a lot of really small stuff uh, and gets very good money for it. Go watch Upcycle Am I Bob following Green. you, Michigan Girl? I don't think I am. I'm, I'm very bad at following people back. Uh, Upcycle by Bree. She's an amazing seller. Absolutely amazing seller. Um, and, and very good. She... You know, Mission Girl was the same way. Talks to the audience the whole time. You know, keeps them engaged in conversation. You know, she's very good about. It. She's not. She's not just showing you the, the little, uh, whatever those. I think I'll make sure I'm uh, following. Red bobbin things are. She's she's gone to Walmart and picked up the greenery and stuff and is putting it in there and includes it with the sale. So she's showing you how to, you know, she's selling skeleton keys. I mean, all kinds of just interesting stuff. You know, she's got a she's got a hutch behind her a lot of time, which has got all these little trinkets, and all this stuff all over it. She's selling pieces of wood and, and showing people how she's. Uh, I'm telling you, if, if you want to see what what not can be, go, go, just give her a look. It's it's absolutely. I think I it's mean, all you know. I, never, it's all I don't in, know from Adam's house cat, but I'm telling you. I think it's all in perception when you perceive a platform to be a certain way. I that's why I didn't do what not a year ago. Because I perceived it to be a certain way. And maybe a year ago it was that way. I don't know. But now, 
it's it seems to be a, a viable place to, to to liquidate things and that's what i'm doing right now i bought a pallet we're going to liquidate that pallet we're going to see how it works the good thing is all that stuff sells on ebay for a little bit more just takes longer to sell so i'm in the business of making as much money as fast as i can so i can come home that's that's the biggest issue right there and so whatnot might afford that to me there is somebody out there that will buy anything yep and when I was about 16, 17 years old, a friend of mine's mother was an artist, and she did a lot of craft shows and stuff like that. And most of her stuff was like $20 items and up. And I just followed uh, your Michigan girl. She, um, you know, these moms would come up with their little kids at these craft shows and whatnot, and the kids were whining and crying and wanting to go on, and the moms wanting to look. So... She wanted to make some cheap little item, you know, that for a buck that the kids could, you know, the moms could buy for the kids and keep them happy. And I must have cut 5,000, about three inch. We took uh, cedar, red cedar limbs and cut them up into about half inch coins. And then she would paint a little thing on them, a picture, a flower or a bird or whatnot, because she could, by the time, if she had been working while we, the show's going on, she had already turned out a hundred little things. And then she'd put a, a little idly, uh screw on the top of it and a little piece of cheap leather, and that was a buck. I told my dad, because he was going to have to give me a raise, because I worked for him during the summer on his survey cruise, because I was making more money <laughs> making these things. And then I ended up ship, having to mail them all over the day, all over South Carolina because people would see it and she'd say, where did you get it from? And they'd give her our phone number and they'd call me up wanting some more. Yeah. There's a guy. It, at our it cost me nothing, nothing except some time to take a, um, a saw and cut them up in those wafers. Yeah, there's a guy at our auction who sells. Uh, he's got a cedar tree and stuff on his property that some, you know, sometimes they fall down or whatever. Right. He sell he sells the, the, the just the big chunks of them. Yeah. And uh, he gets good money for, um, you know, somebody else will run some, and so he'll he'll run them for four or five weeks, and then he'll stop for four or five weeks. And he'll run them again, but they they bring good money. Piece just pieces of cedar. So Carol asks, I. I bought a pallet. I thought you weren't buying until you were out of debt. That's not the case. I'm allowed to buy things as long as it's all cash. And so that's what we did. We paid cash for that pallet. We weren't, it, it came out of my part-time eBay and Amazon earnings. So it, it has not, it, it didn't go into the debt pile. So that's yeah. why. I, and I've already, I've been buying things all along. We stopped. That's where I got this monkey. We stopped at Salvation Army the other day and I, bought, I think I paid $2.99 so I'm allowed to do that. I just can't go. I can't use credit cards. So Larry, every platform, you know, I agree. If, if this is the way you think, it's it's not the right platform from you. I'm telling you, people dis, discount a platform because oh, they don't get they don't get e eBay prices. Not getting eBay prices get eBay in the end of the world. If your cost is right, just think about this. If you if you run a hot on items, and you sell 70, 80 percent of them, you've got 70 or 80 sales. That you've got more money to reinvest. The idea, the whole thing is, we lose track of the we lose track of the whole point of why do you resell? What's the name of the game in reselling? It's right there in the title. What's the name of the game in reselling? Come make Post money. Armageddon Eclipse. Uh, you sale, said it's right in the title. Oh, sale, sale reselling. What's the name of the game? Sale. <laughs> Wrong sale. title. It's. You know, Look, so many people get focused on the price and the price and the price, and they lose track of you make money on the buy, but you've still got to sell. And so if you can buy right, you can sell anywhere. And so don't, don't, limit and whatnot. And don't limit your options by not finding the way to buy right. There's a dude on whatnot that I bought from, and he sells a lot of stuff. He's a storage unit guy. But storage unit guys, they don't care. They're just looking per item. They want it gone, and they still want to sell it all. I bought a, I'm going to tell you, I bought a pair of binoculars for $5 on his auction, plus whatever shipping. I bought a several things. So the shipping was minimal. I sold them for 125. He doesn't care. He got his money, right? He just wants to move items. He made his money on other items. He doesn't care. He's just selling stuff. So Steve wants to flip this pallet. He wants to liquidate this pallet. 
how much time and energy and effort does it take to put it on eBay? How long would it take you to sell all that on eBay? Months, months, or a year, that, or it might not got, sell at all. If you've got the energy tonight, you can run the whole damn pilot and be done with it tonight. There's 980 some units, but about a hundred different, uh, I'd say ASINs, uh, UPCs. So yeah, and it's mixed. It's really cool because um, it's not. There's no OTC on the pallet. Because you can't sell that anyway. Even if there was, I couldn't sell it on whatnot. I could sell it on eBay or Amazon, but not what. Right. So there's clothing, there's socks, there's toys, some nice toys too. I showed uh, Scott one earlier. There's appliances. There. I'm not selling any appliances tonight. Those are already on eBay. You got to pick and choose. You can't sell it all on whatnot. You know, there's some things. Of course, I'm going to send to eBay, and I've sold a few things over there. There's a uh, dog cooling band in it. There's a whole bunch of different things on there. It's kind of, it's just kind of be a, an experiment is what we did. You know, I had the money in my side account from the business. I wanted to try it. And if it, my whatnot name is the same as my name everywhere else, not Sweetwater Legend though. They wouldn't let me use it. <laughs> they said I was going to use Sweetwater Legend and they wouldn't let me use it. They said there was something wrong with the, a, a, a band term or something. I don't know. So it's my name with an underscore in between. But the name 20. of the game is is selling. And if you, how do you, how long do you want to wait to sell this damn pilot? You know, do you want to run it through oh whatnot God. because you bought it to get to try this thing out, or do you want to invest all that time and energy and effort? That's one of the things. On on and listen all that on eBay and seeing how. And then, and then crying, oh, but look, I've got a thousand items on eBay, or I've got twenty thousand items on eBay. There's nothing wrong if if you're building a business up. You know, James catches a lot of hell, and I I, I don't understand why James has fifty, sixty thousand items in his store. That's his business plan. He's working it through. He sells a lot of stuff. He makes a lot of money. It's just not for everybody. Everybody does not have the same energy to list two hundred a day like James does. And uh, I sit back in amazement that he's got that kind of ability and stamina to just be a listed machine. That's not for everybody. That's not to say it's wrong or bad. It's because something, because you don't understand it, because it's not your way, does not mean it's wrong, does not mean it's right for somebody else. And we get so focused on the fact that, that our way has got to be the best. You know, you're, you're not I might lose. I might lose something. my ass on this thing. Who knows? Right. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going tomorrow out sourcing. Uh, I'm gonna take take the van to the shop today, and I'm probably gonna go to forty or fifty stores tomorrow. I'm probably gonna drive three or four hundred miles. And how many people want to do that with me tomorrow? Not many people. I, are in I there. would. I would, but that's another. Um, this type of thing came on the pallet too. This one's going on eBay, but the rest of them I'll sell. Uh, Josh, I don't think people understand how much how much James sells. Every every day, every week, every it's 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 a freaking machine. I don't think they I don't think they get that, Josh. All they all they see is man, he's got a lot of cassette tapes, he's got a lot of hats, he's got a lot of this. You know, nobody wants that stuff, but yet he sells 15, 20, 25 a Who's day. James? Uh my boring resale life. Resale life. Yeah, my boring resale life. Thank you, oh, my boring him. resale. Okay, I, yeah, I've he, seen him. He just catches a lot of flack, but he just keeps carrying. He just keeps, he just keeps going. And one my uh, little pony leg. I don't have it in front of me, but it's one of these things. It's a CVS stretchy. Why are you getting into whatnot, Steve? Or did you say because that I want the the main goal of whatnot is not to sell. It's not to. Just be, it's not a part time thing. I want to get back to reselling full time. Whatnot is a quick way to do that. That's it. I can sell off all the inventory I have in my house. I can go buy a pallet. I can liquidate it quickly. And I can, I can build that money so that I can be a full time reseller again. I am desperately trying to get home. <laughs> you know, my wife too. And if we can build the whatnot side of things and we enjoy it, she'll do it with me. And you might actually see her on camera someday. So we'll see. We Josh, that's a lot the, about it. That's the point people miss. James just is always in the same mood. He's always just um, moving along. He, sometimes he'll be a little irritated because people are just hateful and mean. Uh, but it's just 
find what you want to do, find, build your business the way you want to build whatever it is. I mean, he's been doing it for 20 some freaking years, you know, Oh, that'll never work. 23 years later, they're going, it'll never work. It'll never work. What's the, our friend banana banana finds is that his name. Uh, He's doing the same thing he did, what, 20, 25 years ago, and it works for him. He enjoys it. He loves it. You know, there's people who understand what they what they want out of life. It took me a long time to get there, but I understand that now after, you know, working for everybody else, I'd like to go back to working for myself. <laughs> so 200 is not that damn hard every day, folks. I mean, the everyday part to me is hard, and finding that many items is hard. Um, I listed between eBay and Amazon yesterday, I listed 60 or 70 and I, I was watching, I had burned on, um, I, I shipped, uh, I, I photographed, I photographed and listed 85 items yesterday for whatnot. That that's a lot of work, but I did it in one day. You can do it. I talked to Jennifer like five times. I texted like a hundred, uh, of course, I have some shortcuts. If you guys want to know my shortcuts, it's everything I have has a UPC code on it. So I scan that into eBay and I steal the title from there. So I don't have to do all that typing. And I put that title into whatnot. I check it to make sure it's right. I take one photo because it's really all they're ever going to see on whatnot anyway. And that's it. So I take, but I did 85 of those yesterday. And it, it took me most of the day because I had to sort all this stuff out too, you know, and look it up on eBay and do all that stuff. Josh, just just for, just for earlier on, Josh, I told John whenever you officially came back shortly thereafter, I'm like, we should make this three people. It flows easier. So you might want to you might want to tell John that three people on the podcast flows a little easier than two. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, I let out your secret about how you were crying about the rocking chair and you had to go find Marcia. The, you wouldn't even eat lunch. It was terrible. I didn't eat for two days. I'm still not eating, and I wasn't even there. That sucks leaving stuff behind, though. It's like, it no. Does. Uh, so, vintage memory, I probably won't make it all the way to Memphis. Uh, bring, bring two pew What are you talking about? I'm a, I'm a peace-loving pacifist. I would never carry two. I, I might carry, carry three. three. <laughs> <laughs> I knew exactly <laughs> where you were going. If I had three, uh, you know, that damn, do I need to show you the picture of the boating accident where I lost all of them? It's terrible. Um, but it's so many people get hung up on what others think. And, you know, you watch, you watch YouTube videos, you watch all these YouTube people. And, you know, I think they, some people do a disservice. It's, you know, talking about reselling, talking about concepts, they they give you their opinion and and you start whether you whether you know it or not if if the person you watch a lot is negative towards one platform or another it can affect the way you think about it and can limit your opportunities you need to look at each look at your business look at each one of these platforms with an open mind and what do you how do you want to build your business you know what do you do well what's available to you to find what are you willing to do to find inventory what are you comfortable doing what can you repeat constantly all these things are different for everybody based on where you live, your personality, what you want to do. Uh, and, you know, don't eliminate something because so-and-so hates whatever platform is not a reason for you to eliminate it because at the end of the day, it's about flipping items. It's about selling. You've got to turn the item. How many times can you turn the money to build the money to build the product? All right. Now I'm into a fast nickel type of situation. Faster do I get those nickels, the faster I can be on. And so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. <coughs> it might cost me a few nickels to get there. But I'll get there. We have seven months. We figure in about seven months we can... Whoa, what happened? In about seven months we can come home. Did he shut the show up? No, he didn't. He just he left. Kicked, he kicked himself out. Uh. He should. Seven months, we'll have all our credit cards paid off. <clears throat> but seven months from now is November. And so 
it's not the greatest sourcing time of year. So that we're also looking for different opportunities and pallet. But there just happens to be a really huge pallet place here. And so that that's just another way to make money is all. Now, I'll be a little more picky when I go in the next time, although I like the stuff on this pallet. But I'll be a little more picky next time and really read the manifests a little bit better and things like that. I'm not going to, I might even go for a non manifest palette sometime just for fun, but we'll see. So I got a, if you want to do just for fun, I've got a manifested, uh, unmanifested palette for you. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want your unmanifested palette. <laughs> Throw, I could, I could make somebody an unmanifested palette right now that they probably wouldn't be very happy with. I got so much crap here. Steve, do you unload the pallet while you're there, or I we took both the cars. So you we just... went and and we went. We didn't even know what to do. It was our first time there, so we went in. The guy, hey Barry, I'm coming down the last week of this month. Last week of this month, Tuesday to Tuesday, so whatever that falls on, I'll, I'll get a hold of you. Um, oh Tom, I'm coming down the last week of this month. So um. <clears throat> We went in, had no clue what to do. We'd never been into a pallet place before. We had, this guy is a little strange, but he's he's okay. We had to wait at the door for 15 minutes before anybody came out and told us, you know, what was going on. But once we got in there, he just talked our ears off. And he was a super nice guy. And he showed us around the building. And he's got all sorts of different pallets. We could have done the Amazon returns. Or we could have done a Dollar General pallet like Pat D's does. Or we could have done walgreens but we i chose a cvs palette because i looked at the manifest and i kind of liked what it said so that's why we took that one biscuit bitch is back <laughs> so who was it anyway going to, uh, Nashville? we loaded it we loaded it into two cars and took it home so, so what'd you say harlan so who all in the chats going to nashville all right so that's a good question if you're Next tell year. us tell us in the chat if you're going to nashville it's only two weeks away Lag, I was going to do a video on this whole pallet thing, and I'm like, I looked at it, and I started opening a couple of the boxes just to see, and I'm like, this is so much work. I mean, it's not for the lighthearted. I, I, I talked to Pat, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> how do you do this, you know, every single day? And he, because he buys a lot of them. Now, his pallets, I don't know what, you know, they consist of, but mine was a lot of work. 968 items in there, and 100 or... 120 skews and you got to sort all that and you got you got socks and there's like nine different pairs of types of socks so you got to sort all those out you know that kind of yeah so if you didn't check out uh so josh got was in the chat we appreciate you this morning uh he was on the uh profit playbook podcast man that is getting easier tell john that's getting easier the, the crazy name he made up uh it's uh it says Three of us have a real good conversation. So if you're not if you're not subscribed to that channel, check it out. Um, it's every Saturday. I'm gonna try to convince John to make Josh a permanent part once he gets time. Um, That's so the only, what is the only that? one going to Nashville is the only one to live there. Yeah, I guess <laughs> Phil's the only one going to Nashville. Damn it. <laughs> PP podcast. Yeah. I don't want to be on that show. <laughs> yeah, we, we just try to, because, you know, the, the, the one thing a lot of people don't get other than just on YouTube, which is unfortunate, is you don't get a lot of reseller conversation. You, you don't get it, bounce ideas off because, you you know, you don't take my advice and, you know, whether they live near you or not, have people that you, you talk to a lot. And, uh, it's 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 just a conversation is you know we, we start off with a topic you know tell them where we're going there's really not the p th the p3 show <laughs> uh <laughs> would only be two p's because podcast is really not a it's really not one of the p's the is it all reselling or do y'all jump on other topics it's all reselling. It was. It's just. Oh, so unlike this show, got it. <laughs> God, that's got to be boring. <laughs> <You do>? Yeah. 
try to, try to limit to an hour of just you know just conversations and opinions about what and ideas or whatever's going on. Um, so it's more like a proper podcast, unlike this one. This is a fun morning show, like you hear on the radio. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you figure, I mean, if you're listening to a podcast that has, if you listen to a sports podcast, you're tuning in to listen to about sports. So, I mean, same way for my reselling. I mean, somebody. I mean, everybody here knows <laughs> that this show talks about this and that, reselling. It goes off to other stuff. But a lot of people, if they're tuning in to a podcast, you know, that's about a certain subject, they're probably worth to stay on that. I think we have the perfect show in the, for a morning show. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want it to be as serious as everything else. It, the, the, this the one used to come on later. This one used to vary wildly, but it, it's. The last, last, now, last yeah. year, it, it, is, it has been more a little focused, a little more focused, uh, right? You know, as you change, and a lot of it too is as I've as I've changed focus of what I listen. To, it's amazing that uh, what you focus on, what you listen to, is what you end up what you end up talking about. And yep. and I have I have been a lot more into business development and self development and those things, and that's. <laughs> Imagine that the show has kind of followed followed suit, and I. It's, it was hard. It was hard not to keep politics out of it whenever I was down the rabbit hole to so all the crazy that is politics, until I finally walked away from that. And now it's not even a challenge. I don't even care. Thank you, Jesus. The world can come to an end tomorrow, and uh, just somebody email me when it's over. More of my shows are monetized because he got off the politics. <laughs> 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 yeah, mine kind of stopped getting taken down. Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that weird how that happens? But they, st I, I still get mine uh, half the monetization. They're limited, and I'm like, we don't even say anything bad. <laughs> not really, talking? not anymore. And, we and love I, you, Scott. I, we you know what I, yeah. And I'm sitting here trying to think of why, why would they be limiting our the the monetization and the reach? Of, I know why. It's because now we're talking more about self-help and taking responsibility for your own actions, and the powers that be don't want any of that. And once well, you realize, historically, historically, you have a controversial show at, at points, and so now they look at you more, they scrutinize you more. Once, once you realize that, I, 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 I truly think the, you know, there's a reason why you're not taught about money in school. There's a reason why you're not taught. You know, they you're you're taught to be a worker. You're taught to follow directions. You're 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 very rarely are you you're encouraged to to think outside the box and to under and to you know take it responsibility. You know now you're you know no you're, who's responsible for your actions? The government, your parents, society, your race, whatever is the reason. No, because you make some crazy decision, it's uh it's now everybody's fault, but your own, you know, so they don't, they don't want you independent. They don't want you thinking for yourself. They don't want you taking care of yourself. They're trying to destroy the family. All these things that are happening. You look back, but, uh, you know, that's why I'm trying, I'm trying so hard to develop who I am, the way I think the, the business mind of this, because, you know, probably I just turned 55 really want to, 10 solid more years of just really going at this hard. I don't want to be Tom's age. Well, I do. When I'm Tom's age, I, I want to have, I want to be, I want to swim through the money like he does yeah. every morning when I wake up for breakfast. So <laughs> it's, you know, you were talking about kids not being taught mo about money in school and whatnot. There's a boy down the street and I recently met his dad and uh, he's 17 He's got a he's got a he's got a thousand dollar log splitter and a eight hundred dollar chainsaw and because we have so many storms somebody's always got trees laying down in their yard. He started when he was fifteen with an axe and a tiny ass electric chainsaw and it. And now he's got a good sized business going because if people don't want their wood, they just want it hauled off. He split, goes ahead and splits it up and he sells it to these people in these apartments around here. 
but he has had to learn about managing money, about the taxes and all of that mess that goes along with it. And I go. told him, I said, you need to have a YouTube show for teenagers. <laughs> Is that yours, Harlan? No. <laughs> Tell him, say, my name is Levi. Levi. Say, hey. Name him after jeans. <laughs> Levi jeans. Now, this is the, the lady that does our cooking for us every day. This is her grandson that's here. So I'm here every day. What kind Thank of place you. do you work at that they have a cook come in every day and cook for you? A cook in a daycare, apparently. I know. We'll do, yeah. Yeah, we can all we can always bring kids here. We had a game room, video games and stuff. No. When I tell y'all, it's like he works at Google, Google in the South, but he gets all the same benefits. Yep. Tell him say yep. Oh. Uh, hey, if, if Harlan has another kid, y'all better be looking for the next coming because uh, it would That's be another I'm one. It would be another one of those uh, immaculate conceptions. Uh -huh. That's right. I can practice all I want and not have one. <laughs> I'm not right, buddy. You ready to go back to see your Mimi? You go see Mimi? Hmm? He's getting to the age where he likes to just move around all the time now. She puts me in my high chair. I don't like it. Mm -mm. Nope. But it's... <laughs> Let's go find Mimi. It's fascinating if you'll start focusing on yourself, you know, or start <coughs> controlling controlling what you listen to, listen to listen to podcasts to help you. And that's what I like about Rob Dow. It, it, it's a lot about business, but a lot about just personal inner development. You know, you know, a lot a lot of thought to go through. You know, the negative, what the negative self talk. It's just fifteen minutes, and it gives you a lot to think about. What does negative? How many times have you thought negative? Talk negative to yourself. How often do you do it? If you do a self-assessment and go, wow, I really do talk negative to myself a lot. And it's it's easy to see in someone else. Very difficult to see in yourself unless you're looking for it. And so I challenge you to to get on the journey of self self-discovery, self-development, because the world is going to always change and situations are going to change. And unless you're, unless you're developing yourself and, and changing yourself, you're going to change regardless. It's which way are you going to be and control the direction you're going? Or are you going to allow circumstances to control who you are? I'll tell you, take a year off Stop. of reselling, go deliver groceries and then reevaluate yourself. <laughs> and that's, I'm telling you, it was the best thing that could ever happen. I know where I want to be now. There's a lady that delivers to our house, and she delivers her, delivers out of a Mercedes 350 SUV. She probably just does it because she wants to. We have a lady like that who does. She she doesn't need to. She just wants to. Keeps her busy. And she's, she works as much as we do. But her husband has a lot of money. They They go... You know, to they have a private box at the Cleveland <coughs> Brown Stadium, that kind of thing, that kind of money. And but she delivers groceries because she likes it, keeps her busy. Now, some people are like that. I am the opposite. I do not want to bring you your groceries. I do not want to carry three cases of water upstairs. Yeah. So, so Sue so, says a serious diagnosis can make you change your way of thinking. Yeah. I hundred percent yeah. agree, Sue. But I, I'm I'm trying to tell people. Not to wait that long, you know. Mm -hmm. Make the make the decision that's good for you, that's good for your business and good for your. You only get one shot at this thing. You you know, take advantage of the opportunities and enjoy your life. Do the things you want to do. Develop develop yourself so you can take advantage of all these things. One of our, I'll give you an ex, another example of another one of our other drivers who's never figured it out. She's 63 years old. She delivers groceries every day. Not every day. But she has another job that she works. She's working two, two or three jobs at a time at 63. She spent, and this is no joke, she showed us the proof, $48,000 last year at the casino. Guess how much Hell she yeah. Guess, <laughs> guess how much she won back. 
She only won back twenty one thousand. Mm. So she's down twenty some thousand dollars and can doesn't didn't even realize it. she thought she broke even. <laughs> she has not figured life out yet. They don't right? build those big buildings because they are losing right. money. She she says, Okay, I'm done gambling. Guess how long it took her to go back? Less than a week. You know, and so we look at her and she's a great lady, you know, we like her, she's our friend. But we look at her and like, we don't want to be in positions like that, not thinking about what makes us better. Just keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. That's basically what she does. Super nice lady, but doesn't have a clue when it comes to that kind of thing. $48,000. And she showed us she actually did spend that. Crazy. Yeah, but see, but it is, uh, it, is she, does she say what she's playing? Is she playing slots or is she playing... Slots. Okay. Was that the actual money that she put into the slot machines? Oh, yes. Oh, that was the actual money that she yes, put into is, the slot machines. This is not what she won. This is what she put in. She, and she got 21 back out of all that. Yeah. Because they, they have the Players Club cards. It keeps track of all that stuff for right. you. Yeah. Hmm. I, I understand gambling addiction. I, I used to be there. It is not a fun thing. And I still struggle with it sometimes. But, you know, if I see pass a lottery ticket machine, I, I get all goosebumpy and stuff. But I, I used to spend my whole entire paycheck in a place like that. But I looked at myself, I'm like, I can't do that anymore. You move to Alabama, you won't have that problem. Why? Well, they built a casino here. And the, the day it opened, I went. I, I got a disciplinary it's, day at work. There's, like, there's only like work. three casinos in the whole state. There's no lottery. There's none of that stuff. Well, I don't know how many Pennsylvania has, but they built one here in Erie. And, I think the lottery is getting real close, though, Scott. But so I went the first day, the grand opening. I won four hundred some dollars on a day. Can we make that some I, deal? They I can have the lottery if we get paid. weed. They can have the lottery if we get weed. Can't we make a deal? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we're um, about to get we're about to get weed. It sounds like we're about to get gambling too. So North Carolina did not have the lottery until one of the congressmen, state congressmen. Um, drove down through down went to Carowinds Boulevard, and uh, all of the lottery stores that all they sold was drink, uh, soft drinks, snacks, food. I mean, um, you know, like hot dogs that type of thing. Uh, beer and lottery tickets, and you could not get into the building for all the damn North Carolina tags sitting there. And so it was a matter of fact, why, why are we giving South Carolina or, you know, any well, of the other it, states yeah. that have lotteries that's bounding up against South, uh, North Carolina, why are we giving them all this money? So we got it real quick after that. We've My been town capitalized. We are um, a border <clears throat> town, so we border with Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania gas tax is so expensive. It's three eighty nine a gallon over there. Here it's three twenty nine a gallon. Where do you think all the Pennsylvanians go? They come here. Well, that's why they do here. Yeah, it's crazy. But it's and, it, so it's Har funny Har that all the border towns don't do it. So Harlan will tell you we drive the Fayetteville uh, every week. Harlan, after the church, what's the what's the next thing across the state line? Gambling. Uh, lottery uh, building. There's a lottery. church that sits on the line. There mm -hmm. is a lottery building next to it, and then a gas station. That has a lottery building in it. I mean, the first two buildings are for the lottery. And then you go down a little farther, there's a convenience store on the other side of the road. has a huge lottery building. I mean, the, that one, major... the first one on the left is where I have to go to. See, we, I do DraftKings, but we can't do it in Alabama, but I can do it in Tennessee. So I have to go up about a half a mile into Tennessee. So my GPS or whatever recognizes where I'm at. So, um, if I could just get DraftKings in Alabama, I'd be. I'd I be think good. we just got you that can, here. You can. You just need a. You need a VPN, three dollars a month. So, my question on that: If I've already signed up for, for um, that, and they know I'm in Alabama, can I still do that? You think? But it because you're basically all it is is a. So if this is your internet, it's going to send your internet through a Adam anonymizer and it's going to come out the other side and wherever your internet goes you tell it where you live 
if you want to tell it, you I live in it it but they know I'm in Alabama. They have my address and stuff already. But can I show that I'm somewhere else through a VPN? Yes. You know, I watch so it. Back. So does it matter? It, it only matters where you're gambling at. So, like, if you're gambling right, in Tennessee, right. you're fine. So, will so, a VPN recognize yeah. that I'm somewhere else? That was well, it, It'd be the same thing, Harlan, as you going to Tennessee. They know you're in Alabama, but you're in Tennessee doing it. So, right. they know. So, it, so what's the difference? V- so if I get a VPN, will will it show if I'm in Alabama? It'll will show it, you wherever you tell it. You pick the server that you want it to come through. So I watch all these sailing channels, and they all they all use VPNs because if you Netflix in each country is different. So if if you tell it that that you're in, if you're in uh, say Russia and they won't allow Netflix or China, but you tell it that you're in the U.S., you get yeah. whatever you want. Okay. You you tell it what which VPN server you want to come off of. Not that we condone anything illegal. Yeah, illegal. But because I've got one that shows it from I'm in the UK. That's and that way you can see all the UK. We TV don't do. This I can stuff. watch UK TV. This is all hypothetical. It's not hypothetical. It's the truth. Do whatever you want to. Yeah, I mean it's not. <laughs> it's it's nothing illegal. Because I mean, if, they, if, if it was illegal, illegal, they would have already shut the VPNs. So, yeah. so what's the best VPN to get? Uh, just do just do some research. There, each one of them has. Um, uh, there's there's three or four big name brands. Uh, Surfshark's a big one. Uh, devices, so you can use one on your phone and your home internet, and you need to pay attention to how they. Ch- how they charge you per device. Uh, it will slow your connection down just a little bit because you're going, you're routing it through somebody else's server. I mean, I just need something for my phone. Well, I guess if you get it, does it go through phone and home? I guess. Uh, depending on which service you get. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about it later. On to reselling. It's a money making venture, so but uh, and it's it's big it's big thing is uh for privacy for security. So because you know if, if you're out and about and you connect to an open so say you're going to and, and connect into just any old I'm not saying like Walmart's Wi Fi, but if you connect to you know, hey, I'm 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 at the club and so and so is there's a free Wi Fi and you connect to stuff like that, you know, people can set up hotspots where it looks like it's free Wi Fi and they can maliciously get your information off your phone if they're good enough. Um, and there are lots of them out there that can do this. And so if you go to a VPN, then to the Wi-Fi, it, it never gets your actual information. So it puts up a fire, it basically puts up a firewall between you and someone else for getting your information. So if you were going to, and it, it's a, so like, like me, if I'm out, if I go start traveling a lot again and I'm at hotels, you know, in order to keep the hotels from getting your information, uh, go through uh, Nord. Is Lag says he uses Nord. It's probably why we can't find you, Lag. We've been trying. Yeah, we've been trying yeah, to. We will. We've been trying to contact you about your car insurance. <laughs> and your uh, Medicare needs to be renewed. <laughs> and it, it also control the data that these companies can get from you. So if if you go through your Fire, through your VPN and then through your, it, uh, Tom says Xfinity Wi-Fi is scary because it is Xfinity has this program or whatever where if you have Xfinity, you, it'll pull it'll put it, it allow if the settings are not changed, you allow others to use your Xfinity Wi-Fi if they're in your area as a guest because Xfinity is trying to make it where they have more reach and more of a network. And so that's supposedly one of the benefits, but yeah, your information is being pushed out there. I know you're not going to believe this, but there's a bunch of videos about VPN and DraftKings. I know hard to believe it's there. Yeah, Tom, you're hundred percent right. It's very easy to look like Xfinity. hundred percent. Now, one of the things you do run into a problem, Harlan, and it's not really a hard problem is, um, because on mine, I, I've got it set up so it randomly jumps around from different countries. So every time I have one device that I use for online banking, 
because online banking like freaks out you'll start getting phone calls if somebody hits your account from from oh, yeah, yeah. you know new zealand all of a sudden mm -hmm. they're going you probably get a phone call from the bank so <laughs> But it's, it, you know, so just think about how much of your life is online and how, how vulnerable we are. You know, how many, it, there's, a, there's a day go by that you don't hear that, that a certain company has been hacked and your data is now been exposed. And not the exposure way that lag you're thinking, not that kind of exposure. <laughs> well, I was thinking of Harlan at, Harlan at <laughs> Las Vegas. That's what I popped into my mind. <laughs> Yeah, like Harlan exposed everybody to uh, Officer Dangle. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> everybody needs to be exposed to Officer Dangle. Oh, poor Harlan. He catches hell. Have you shown have you shown Marcia that picture of you in Vegas uh <laughs> standing there on the stairs in the, in your dangle costume? I think she's seen that, yeah. That's why we're <laughs> going out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she has no. not seen that costume yet, though. No, this is a good reselling. I mean, not not for DraftKings, but to to understand, you know, the vulnerability that your accounts. You know what happens? What happens if you lose your? You know, somebody breaks into your Amazon seller or eBay seller, and they can do serious damage to your accounts and your ability to make money. And so, you need to understand how to safely. Um, safely do things the the and that's where they're so both most most cell phones are pretty decent with security these days but i can tell you that is a difference in the strengths between a google and an, and an iphone right now the the uh the government is suing apple due to their walled guard what they call a walled garden so if you're not i'll give you the the quick gist about it you know if you have an iphone and you decide I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy an Apple Watch. You know that Apple Watch only works with iPhones. And you know later on you decide I'm gonna get an Android phone. I don't like this iPhone, but I want to keep using the watch because I love it. Tough shit. The I, the Apple Watch does not work with it, and so the government is saying that they have built an unfair monopoly because they control well over half of the phones in the U.S. are iPhones, and and so all their devices don't play well with others, which you know. I have a hard time with this one because you know they've created a competitive advantage in their own products. I mean, it's why why should they be forced to make them play nice with others? Because if, there's people that only use Apple products because their phone communicates with their computer and their smartwatch and their whatever but, else that Apple has. But the thing they don't any problems at all. Kent's 100 percent correct. Uh, uh. They, it is very because if you look at the overall market share in the in the world, Apple MacBooks and stuff are very low. Phone, they're they're the phones are the big thing, and so it is the viruses. How many times you hear about a virus for a MacBook computer? That people don't waste their time on that small percentage of 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 Mac the MacBook market, but that you'll hear stuff about exploits with the iPhone. But the iPhone, if you Put Apple if you put Apple uh, if you put Apple against Android, Apple is the safer environment because of it, there are less people going after them, and generally the security on an iPhone is a, is a, a notch better than an Android. Even though people don't talk about it a lot. Only rich people have Android. I mean, have Apple products. Uh, I I just like the fact that they all talk together and they all work together. I mean, I just I. Yes. As I'm sitting here on a Mac with my iPhone and my Apple Watch, I mean, I, I have I have an iPhone sitting here. I'm on a PC today. I mean, I don't have any problem with PCs. I have, I'm, I, I'm working. I've been running my whatnots off my PC because it's portable, so I can move it around. Speaking of which, anybody who's interested, I'm going to put the link in here one time today. There's no discount coupon. Hit, hit, it, hit it five or six time. times. There you go. That's the show tonight. You guys are interested. I'm not, I, I tried to give you all a discount or fifteen dollars free last week, and nobody took advantage of it. Andy Glass is the only one who took advantage of it, but and that was a week late. So, well, that's only uh, good for a new buyer. I bought on whatnot before. Right, 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 right. So I could, but I know it. some of you all are new buyers. And, so there's and some smarter people. people. There's, there's some smarter way people than me. Uh, you know, Basket Noodle is telling you in the chat about uh, network sniffing hardware versus viruses. 
Yeah, um, I don't. It's that's a that's above my pay grade, but it's network security is is a thing that is very complicated now, and it gets more and more complicated every day. And so, you know, you know, if if you have something to lose and really want protection, I, you know, you need to look into a VPN or a, or VPS or whichever one. There's plenty of videos out there of people who understand these things, and you know, imagine that you know, YouTube and Google for all their ills and all their heart, their headaches, you know, use them for specific knowledge. You know, I want to know the difference. I want, you know, I want to tell me about a VPN, tell me which one's best. And you'll, you'll be able to pick who you're looking at and who you, the, the content you consume, but that is not. And if I can get a VPN and, and bet every day, I'll be broke in no time. Yes. Why is that? Eight thousand dollars later. <laughs> I'm not against gambling if that's your thing, and you know, I'm just for for the lady I talked about earlier. If she would just really know her numbers, just like anything else, like we mm-hmm. as resellers, we need to know our numbers, right? If she knew her numbers, she'd probably do it a lot less. Although she went right back to it, even though she knew. So I don't, Mr. Miss, Mr. Sadie, if some people. If I don't if I don't sniff my big girl returns, how do I know which ones are new and which ones are not new? Hey, <laughs> that is just nasty, there, Scott. <laughs> I might have to stop following Scott. <laughs> I know that just knowing that I wonder information. I, that I, wonder nasty. I, can, I wonder if I can sell the start whatnot, and I start selling the big girl stuff, and I'll start selling the the, uh, the new ones and the used ones. <laughs> I would know. I sell, the new ah. I sell the new ones, and then this is the return show. So for those of you who want a different flavor, these are the returns. I, I would try it. Late night. You show. might get rid of that stuff pretty quick. That is oh. that. Yeah. I always Depending wondered how why, you advertise. I always wondered why Scott smelled like summer's eve. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scott. Yeah. Uh, Bearded sure. picker after dark. <laughs> So Basket Noodle says, for example, never use a Wi-Fi like a restaurant or Starbucks, and he's 100% correct. I can tell you how Apple and some of these things, you can help yourself out. You know, not only does you, – so when you are when you leave your house, your phone is always searching for Wi-Fi, and so that uses up significant battery in, a, in, a, in the life of a phone as it's looking to connect to other connections. Um, all these – all these – program you can you, – all these – you can set your phone up to when you leave your home – that it will turn off your, I'll turn off the Wi-Fi, and turn it back on when you get home, and so you never have to worry about the Wi-Fi. Um, you know, it's it's in the. Uh, I run my right? my uh, cheapy Android that has no time on it. I, I just use it for surfing the internet while I'm waiting for orders. I run that off my, my hotspot on my Apple, but my they're off my iPhone. My iPhone is set up to only connect them. <laughs> Yeah, this is otherwise it's just cell service. Yeah, we know a little bit too much about Scott now. It's uh, oh, we figured it out a long time ago. We just don't talk about it. If y'all only knew how boring I was, and all this is just for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to start out um, being an actor then because you are I mean, good. <laughs> I mean, other than going to the U- UPS yesterday, I didn't even leave the house. Uh you're talking to somebody who's been married forever, been the same woman for 35 years. I am the most vanilla, boring person you've ever met. Uh, mm-hmm. But I will say crazy mm-hmm. stuff on the internet just because it's just on the internet. Uh, yeah. I'm right behind you. It's crazy boring. Costume. That's what you need. Lieutenant Dangle or a pimp costume. That's That'll just... I, I do like that guy on... Uh, I think he's on, it's on Instagram. Uh, purple. You ever see him? It's purple. <laughs> Purple or what? Pimp? It, he's the name of the pimp. He's the, he's purple. Hey, that's his name. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll have to find I'll send you purple. Uh, yeah, Timothy, I think they just stopped all the CPAP stuff up at our auction. Uh, we used to sell that up there. I and tried I to sell one and they and they didn't list it, so I don't know. They didn't, yeah. So I don't know. We we didn't ask. I need to ask him about that. Somebody may have said something, but I'm sure it's a li- liability issue for the auction house. I'm sure. You know the the thing is, I put a uh, 
I put a tag on it that says what it was. Maybe I'll just run it up there and not even mention what it is. See what happens. <laughs> I stopped with CPAP stuff altogether. <laughs> I'm fine. I mean, I, I, I don't need I mean, any lawsuits. There's opportunity right now. If you've, if you've got CVSs in your area that sell CPAP stuff, all that stuff is is being heavily discounted and, and their CVS is selling out of it. So here's the, here's the rule of thumb. If it's on, if it's on the shelf in CVS, they have to follow the same legal standard that you do on eBay. So if you buy it over the counter, you can sell it on, on eBay, you know, so they'll sell, if you look at it, cause I bought one cause you know, I happened to get the Orlando without a damn CPAP mask. And so how they get around it, you know, you'll see that see the CVS has a mask. They had the mask I was wanting, mm -hmm. but it didn't have the headgear. So I had to have out the headgear separate. So the headgear is just a strap that holds it to your head. So it is not considered a complete mask without the strap and the headgear together. So mm -hmm. they can sell. So you, you'll be in CVS and go, how can they sell a mask? It, it doesn't have the headgear. And even the package on the site does not include headgear. So uh, it's yeah, so CVS stuff is pretty safe. There is a site that does buy that back. We looked at that one day. Um, I was at the bins. Part for a prescription. True. Uh, it was at the Goodwill bins, and I found a CPAP machine, and I looked it up right on that site. Now it wasn't one that they were particularly paying a lot for, so I didn't get it. But uh, there's your name of the show. Second Wind is the name of one of the places. Yeah, Second Wind is the good is the best one that I've heard of. Yeah, so Timothy, that 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 was to do exactly what Steve did. Get the model numbers, and the one thing you're going to have to uh, to know is one of the they want to know how many hours are on the machine, and so you're going to have to turn it on to get in the and because you know I just avoid so them definitely. anyway because it just I after getting sued by that one company or almost sued by that one company, I'm like, okay, CPAP stuff for me is probably not going to be the way to go. So there's one called that. Three Sheets to the Wind, and they're kind, they're kind of a crazy company. They buy it back. <laughs> yeah, one time in Vegas, I was Three Sheets to the Wind. <laughs> one time in Vegas, you were Three Sheets to the Wind. <laughs> I don't remember what you're talking about. Uh, unfortunately, each one of us remembers what the other one is talking about. <laughs> I know somebody who remembers the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to go visit him here in a couple of weeks. YouTube remembers because there's video showing it. Oh, I remember that video. Yeah, yeah. I still oh, uh, I still owe Barry for that one. He had my back. Uh, Thrifty yeah. Santa. Barry's about the Barry's about the best dude ever. Yeah, he is. I met him honorable dude. Yeah, last, honorable. last year. Yeah, it's weird when you call Scott and Thrifty Santa answers the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, what are you answering Scott's phone for? Scott's out. Uh, so we got 10 minutes left. We're actually going to make it all the way to 10 o'clock. Yes. And I only spammed the chat once. Nice. I'll spam them again. I will at the end of the show. Well, you'll probably just shut me off, so I don't know. Damn it. He would never do a thing like that. Probably already did, and I just don't know it. Yeah. He, he, shows, show's over. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, the bass and noodle, they can, they're never going to be able to control the dark web, though. And they, they, they can, everything they, everything they try is, the, the problem is, is you've got so many people that they're trying to pass laws. And you've got all the, you've got all these companies who are spending millions and millions of dollars and, and lining the pockets of these politicians to try to get the laws written their, their way and the way they can take advantage of it. It's never going to be good for the people. It's never going to be good for the public. We are going to get screwed like like we always do, and there will be plenty of people who get around all this stuff. Uh, oh, Barry's in the chat. What's up, Barry? Yeah, I saw him come in earlier. You were, we uh, thought you were gone. You weren't supposed to hear all that good stuff, Barry. Come on. Yeah, he's a nice bloke. <laughs> he's a he's a nice uh, bloke. But, huh? <laughs> when do we go to Australia? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I've I spent two weeks there, and I've just oh, so, so now some you're things kind of stuck, you know. My wife watches the British TV, and then I catch her with the accent every once in a while. It's well, like, I don't do the accent, but I'll say that's ten quid, because <laughs> you know? we watch a lot of English TV too. 
It's kind of, <laughs> yeah, she watches like the mystery dramas, you know, like I don't know the name. They got some messed up stuff. Okay, there goes. <laughs> No, it was less than 10 seconds. We're good for monetization okay. that he didn't have anyway. <laughs> yeah, it, That's my ringtone. Is it? Mm-hmm. Name Mine's that song. Default. I don't know. Name that band. Name that song. I don't know. I don't listen to that kind of music. Motley Crue. Yeah. I'll go <laughs> with Motley this, Crue. That's this group of people on TV, on the internet right now, Motley Crue. <laughs> I don't know who that. Who, who is that? They've been on in the van. I played that song in the van. You still didn't know it. Okay, who is it? I have no idea because I'm not. I, I listen to country music. So. In an I occasional it, punk. The lead singer actually had a solo career after this group. I'm going with Brian Adams. No. Bill Collins. Anchovy. It's, it's got a Q in it. Bon Jovi's grandmother used to live near here. Queen? Queen's right? It was definitely not Queen. <clears throat> uh, Lee Singer uh, was Tom Waits. Tom Waits? <laughs> Tom Waits. Still, still have no idea. Roberta, you, when she lived in Fort Lauderdale, she, her next door neighbor was the mother of the lead singer of Poison. So she said it was kind of weird. She'd go to concert with her mother, or with his mother. And then they would come over, you know, during the week, and she, cause she'd fix some dinner. And she said it was just like a bunch of guys, you know, just a bunch of guys. No. F- Drinking and drugging and carousing. They just read our books. I didn't even know who Poison was until I married her. <laughs> Poison's one of my all time favorites. Do you? Poison, Rat, Motley Crue. That little generation gap thing going on with my wife. <laughs> okay. I got to go. <laughs> yeah, we're out. Uh... Oh, wait, what? <laughs> you got to post my link one more time. Yeah, hit it one more time. What time are you going to do it? 8.30 Eastern tonight. Okay, I might be back. I put, the, I put the answer in the chat. It's past oh. my bedtime. The babies? No, Every time they come on, you go, who is that? And then you try to hit yeah. the, full, the, the skip uh, button. I'm not familiar. <laughs> Did y'all even live in the 80s? What the hell? I, I did, but I listen to like okay. It's, uh, has has no, anybody listen. have anybody seen the Dark Shadows movie with Johnny Depp? No. 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 There's this one. Uh, Alice Cooper's in it because it takes place in the seventies, and you know, of course, Johnny Depp is uh, Barnabas Collins, the vampire. Anyway, they're going to have a party, and like we're supposed to know that, uh, and um, Alice Cooper's going to perform there. And Johnny Depp goes, that is, or Barnabas goes, that is one ugly woman. Okay, Harlan, you want me to change my ringtone to a song you've actually heard before? I don't care. What the what? (laughs) What? Who was that? That was demonetization. That's what that was. That was yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, it only allows it for like eight seconds, so I didn't play all the way through. No, they lightened up on the cussing. That's five FTP. They like have you, there was a, a memo sent out that one not I too long guessed. ago, and they were talking about that they're lighting. Up, you know, the cussing is not going to immediately get you demonetized, demonetized unless you're every other word out of your mouth is the F word or you know. That kind of thing. Because I think they had too many people leaving and going other places. 
Yeah, it's. Oh yeah, they got way too strict on that for a short time. It didn't because every game, if any of you follow any gamers, any of the big gamers, you know, they're dropping the f bomb like every other word. But anyway, I got to go. Y'all have a great day. Make some money. So Dustin, uh, I enjoy getting the shipping boxes. For one, that means you're selling a lot. I also, uh, I'm telling you, find the right shipping boxes. It's absolutely amazing how fast you can ship stuff and. The stuff that I started selling, you know, fits very well in 10 4-4s, 12 4-4s. It's amazing how many. I've already gone through 125 uh, 10, 10 4-4s, and I've got to order some more today. It's because I'm about to, I've got them over there. I'm I'm about to use up eight or 10 more. And if you're when selling you on one, right, keep your medium medium and large flat rate. It's all the same price. 835 up to 75. Can't use the U-Haul box. It's nice. Um, Bassett, no, you are correct. You can get good deals at times. Uh, you can filter there. They clearance out their boxes, so every now and then you can get really good deals. Um, their shipping is really fast, and their but their boxes are a little on the heavy side. Um, I use the twenty-four count boxes, strength boxes versus the thirty-twos. Uh, it's not I as big a deal. Don't laugh at those Walmart boxes. When when you need one and it's there, you buy it. I used to use their six by six by sixes all the time. They're really good boxes. So that but that thought has changed though, folks, because once you get past a pound, um, ground cubic and stuff are you can you can ship a one point five up to two pound ground cubic box cheaper than the sixteen ounce rate. It's been insane because. You know, that 16 ounce rate will be in the low six dollars. And then I've gotten ground cubics in the fives. It is is absolutely amazing. I mean, take advantage of the shipping. I thought we started about this as a good place to end. You, you don't understand the doors it opens unless you're taking advantage of it. The shipping is it's absolutely amazing right now. So I hope it doesn't catch up with us though. I don't, I don't think it, it will eventually, but I mean everything does eventually, but ching. I listed that yesterday, sold it today. What? If you list it, it'll sell? Yeah, it was well, that wireless the right stuff. It was that wireless uh, network thing from that Xbox 360 I bought. Oh, that wow. Xbox 60 right there that doesn't work. Was that the go? red oh, the red ring. Work? oh, I can fix that for you. The red no. ring of death. You got to take it apart, put new thermal paste on it. Should work, but it's not an easy process. So. Yeah, uh, I would just run through the auction and tell them uh, the parts right there. But it isn't super. I bought a bunch of them at a yard sale one time and fixed them all but one. Thermal paste fixed it. It's well, just yeah, uh, that's a new. I agree. Uh, you can be definitely be more competitive than people because most people do not know how to set up the. Um, the variable rate shipping on eBay and it becomes some crazy number. Whenever the, if you've got a one or two pound, I mean, it changes some, you know, how many different areas, but the significance of, you know, it'll be a $6 box or a $6. It's, and it's like a 40, 50 cent range max that it, that these based on the distance, it's not like it used to be. And so you can set the same rate for local that you can set for California for me. And law of averages, you were average out to break it even where you need to be. But the, if you do calculated, I promise you right now, go check your calculated. You've got items that are wrong. Yep. I can promise you, you've got items that people are not. I don't understand why this hadn't sold because you got the wrong shipping on it. I I just. Checked all my calculated. And you know what I had? I had U.S. priority first. I changed that to ground advantage first. Yeah, so Bassin, that's, that's that's the way I think too. I, I I've got one that's a little more expensive. I'm, I'm gonna lower mine both today because I I think that's because what I is would, the what is this I variable pricing? I, I'm not. I haven't heard that. He's, he's talking about calculated. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I just hadn't heard it said that way. 
Well, and Mark, to get around showing the price for your zip code, you can change that to any zip code you want and see what the price would be. I do it all the time. And you know what the next thing I want to change?